We are two days into uh, 2021 right now, and um, so far, so good for my New Year's resolutions, which is really two days longer than how long they usually last. It's all a thing. How are you doing with your New Year's resolutions? Um, I'm going to tell you why day two of our resolution is working so well in just a minute, but before I do, hello. I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things, and you are here for day 275 of 365 days of soap, and day two of a New Year's resolution that we decided for the soap shop in that we are going to be making all of Amy Warden's soap challenge challenges. Not all of them, because again, some of them are not gonna do it. But this particular one we did yesterday, it was my turn for the Mantra Swirl, and today it is a Soap Prentice's turn. Now, again, for the soap challenges, we decided that we're doing a little bit of a competition between the two of us, so we will use the same oil recipe blend, the same scent, and change up the colors and also the way that we pour based on our own soaping habits to see ultimately who did it better. And so we have our own little mini competition amongst ourselves because this particular swirl, the Mantra Swirl, that's like six, seven years old in the Amy Warden Soap Challenge. It's been around for a hot minute. So I can't like submit and say, hey, do you like my stuff? So we're doing it this way instead. So yes, today is Georgia May's turn at the Mantra Swirl. Now, if you tuned into yesterday's swirl pattern, soap thing, it's a slab pour. You still, you do the, okay. I'm still awkward in front of the camera. I'm not like in the groove yet. So I'm going to stop doing this and we're going to go to the video where you don't have to see me twitch. All right. Mantra part two, the soap Prentice's turn, which is, you know, fun. I, I really like this. It's been a, when we had the idea to go back and revisit and actually properly do all of the Amy Warden soap challenges that we haven't done over the years, like we just haven't done them. I, yeah, that. Uh, I This idea of, you know, us each doing a batch and kind of like doing like competition style, like who does it better and all the things, thought would be really, really fun because there are some skill sets that I have that Georgia May does not, and there are even more skill sets that Georgia May has that I do not. So it's all gonna be fun. This, uh, she's got a lot going on up there. She's got six beakers out. That's a, that's a lot. That's a lot of beakers. There's a lot of beakerage going on. Now the scent blend that we're using for this is the exact same one that we used for my, my mantra yesterday, right? Which is the, uh, the frangipani jasmine. Am I saying frangipani right? It's a fun word. I just don't know if I'm saying it right. But yeah, it's a uh, very, very floral. It's jasmine and plumeria. And it's a very light, sweet floral, but the scent throw is actually very strong, and uh, it doesn't—it doesn't give me a headache, which I super love because most florals I hate them because I get headaches or because they smell like, you know, old grandmas, really. So yeah, this one very delightful from Nurture Soap. It's a—it's a very good blend, but the act or the uh, Kaylin Clay has gone into that it's dispersed in water through this, and she has a beautifully fluid batch. For all of this and so that's delightful my batch did not stay this fluid at all i definitely worked it past um an emulsion which i probably shouldn't have done because it needed to be 
worked into the colors so much that the extra motion from you know mixing the colors in and coloring the scent batter or the soap batter was going to you know thicken it enough for me but she has definitely stayed with a uh, nice thin batter for this which is good and she's got another uh, another beaker out so that's well I mean I guess it's back to six now because the Kaylin clay beaker is now gone but still lots of beakers lots of colors and um, I'm interested to see which one she does the she makes the main base and so it's not that green and it's not that yellow and since she set the orange back there I'm guessing it's the orange so she's gonna have two different greens a yellow and looks like a white for her mantra swirl so she is doing a four color swirl a five color bar yesterday I did a three color swirl on the four color bar so yeah she's she's gonna she's gonna one-up me with the colors and all the things well I mean the soap apprentice does that on the daily right this is not this is not new this is all interesting though I'm wondering why she's measuring out I wonder if it's said in the the soap challenge tutorial or the video like the percentages of the batter that should go into each thing I don't know if it did or not I clearly did not get that memo if it did say that because I I didn't do that I just poured off some 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 colors and then the rest became the base that was my thing but she clearly has it all figured out so there's about for this this is like a three pound batch of soap right and each of those beakers have oh about eight ounces in them at this point and so that means she has about 25 ish ounces for her orange and then about 25 ish ounces well 30 ish ounces for her beakers I can has math that math was not right by the way that's why I say ish yeah but that's a beautiful orange color like that's a very nice corally type color I I dig that that's a nice thing to kick off the new year with for sure now I I am certain George May did not go to you know design seeds or Pantone colors and pick palettes and do whatever for hers because she's an actual artist like that's that's her thing and so colors she already she loves color stories she, she designs them on her own she does not need assistance and so she didn't need to do that little thing so I have nothing to put on the screen and say well this was her inspiration although if she did have inspiration yeah we could we could pop those on too because that'd be fun but yeah no the batter is still staying reasonably fluid throughout all of this and she's she has a spatula into the beakers which I always find really annoying to work with and I always do I always move to the skewers because I think it's easier to move the batter around but also the soap is like the beakers are really full right now and so maybe that's why she did it I don't know I, I really don't know I'm not in her brain and at this exact moment she has the brain cell the one that we share in her head while she's making the soap so there's that and yeah these are this is a very interesting color story for sure and I am very much looking forward to seeing what she ends up doing with it for her pour how she puts the different colors into the mold to do all the things because you know that can also make or break a pour like this as well and I mean not really make or break because at the end of the day it's still soap and it's still going to be stunning regardless but it can change the effect the the order in which you put your your colors in for sure and she has some cool stuff going on here so she could be doing sort of like a gradient thing or an ombre thing which again I don't remember the difference a color shift from yellow to green with orange in the middle orange Roy G Bib you could do that you could do orange in the middle as the base and then yellow and then green on the outsides that would be an option for all of this and maybe that's what she was thinking I don't know I'm sure she'll let us know in the comments below when she watches the video but for now these are all scented and colored and the batters looking pretty good and all of the things and she is ready for the pouring of the mantra swirl so let's go check out her you know setup with the you know the dividers and all of the things because 
that's what we're doing. We're doing Amy Warden Soap Challenge and she uses dividers, so we're gonna use dividers, right? And wrong. Georgia May is not using dividers. Georgia May looked at the mantra swirl and the tutorial and the video and read the stuff and went, nah, I'm not gonna do that. I'm going to do this the way Mrs. Soap and Clay taught me how to make soap and do mantras. And so that's what she's doing, which is awesome. Now she has the perfect consistency of batter to do this, to do it this way. Because if your batter's too thin at this stage and not using dividers, it's just gonna start sliding all over the, the mold and you're not gonna get the lines where you want them, like at all. But if it's too thick, it's not going to skewer at the end. And so this is a really good fluidity of batter to do, again, a mantra swirl without dividers. Yesterday I showed you with dividers and I don't like dividers and they move and it's floppy and it's annoying and it's all the things. And she's doing it without. She's doing it the way that we usually make, you know, mantra swirls. And I'm here for that, for sure, because look, that's just, it's such an easier process. You just, you, you do the things and you put the color where you want it. And again, it's all about the thickness of the batter. You can do that if you pay attention to how thick your batter is. Like, that's, that's the whole last trick to all, you know, complicated, to most complicated soap things. Well, to all soaping that you're doing something other than just like a one color, whatever. It's the fluidity of the batter. You, you have to know your batter and how it will push down the layers that are underneath it or next to it or whatever, how it will move. And, you know, George Main Slabs, she knows how soap will move. I mean, you remember her Bob Ross? Yes, that was a beautiful, beautiful video of just like pure slab mold artistry perfection. She had all the different textures of batter and all the different, you know, all of it. It was ridiculous and she created a Bob Ross. Happy little trees and little clouds and all of the texture and all of the things in a slab mold, paying attention to the consistency and the fluidity of her batters to make cool like dimensional soap in a slab. It was awesome. So she's got this. Again, this is a, as I said, right? I, I did say it yesterday. This is a bit of a softball to be starting out this whole, we're gonna redo all of Amy Warden's soap challenge, challenge things. It is. And uh, as we get further on into her list, um, we might just give it up completely and just stop doing it because my God, there is so, she's got some complicated things. Like that soap challenge is, uh, an exercise in patience in well patience really it's not even so much the the technique and the skill it's patience to actually do it and I I have none of that I don't have any of that guy patience that's not he's not my friend I no. so yeah as we get further along in this we we may very well go you know what this was this was not a good idea for content. We're not gonna do that. And, you know, move to something else. I, I'm hoping not, but like, again, this was my New Year's resolution to go and do all of the soap challenges that Amy Warden has ever, has ever done. And so that's my New Year's resolution. How many of your New Year's resolutions actually are fulfilled, like completed? I really do try to actually complete all of my New Year's resolutions and see them out to their end goal, whatever that end goal is. But also, I, I my New Year's resolutions are always something that I can reasonably accomplish. Like, I want to fold my laundry every week. I can, I can do that. I can do that. Like, if it's, I want to do every single soap challenge that Amy Warden has ever done. Well, I don't know that I can do that one, guys. I, I don't know that that one's gonna happen. It's like a, 
I think they're Catholics. The Catholics that do that 40 days that give up the thing for Lent or whatever. And all my friends are always, because that's like a, just a secondary New Year's challenge, right? New Year's, you know, resolution. It's a secondary thing of, oh God, how long until I blow this completely? And my friends that are Catholic and do the Lent thing, I mean, it might be more than just Catholics. I don't know. They, they do things like I'm giving up chocolate or I'm giving up coffee. And I'm like, I, I, I wouldn't last three minutes in that. Like, yeah, and I guess it's supposed to like hurt, I, I guess. I just, yeah. Anyway, point. New Year's challenge, New Year's resolutions and uh, seeing them through to completion. It's a, uh, I don't know. It's, it's a hit or miss thing depending on the complexity of the thing that you have selected. And um, we have selected a rather complex one after this pour, after the mantra, because there's a lot of really hard stuff in that on that list from Amy Warden. So we shall see. But this is very interesting, her putting the extra orange on the sides. I'm thinking maybe she decided that she ultimately ended up with too much orange, maybe, and she wasn't going to be able to bang this down to a I don't know. I, I really don't know. It's cool though, having that little pop of orange at the side. It's not like you get that pop of orange at the side just by nature of skewering it anyway. But you know, I don't know. Well we'll check it out and see, you know, what it all what it all does in the cut, but she does have to get this, you know, banged down and smooth before she can do much else with it. And I wonder what skewer she's going to use with this and how she's going to do the thing. This is I'm interested to find out. Oh, and she still has a little bit of white that has to go in there somewhere. Oh, just put it on the side. Sure, sure. Cool thing is about, you know, a mantra swirl, all of these colors get blended together. So she's not going to be taking the skewer out and actually skewering the uh, side colors, the accent colors into each other, which is, you know, part of a mantra swirl, you know, tutorial anytime that you ever, but also it's not necessary because you're still skewering them into the main body of the soap. So go oh, either way, you know, if you like skewering your accents into each other before doing the big swirl, go off. That's awesome. Do your thing. But you know, you also don't have to. And she is using a proper bamboo skewer for this with some kind of thick batter. So this will be interesting to watch it all pull and see how it all does. Now, what is she doing? Is she just cleaning up the edge or is she, I think she's just cleaning up the edge there. Yes. Okay, cool. So she's not going to take the skewer to the main body of the accent or to the accent. She's going to just going to skewer it all into, you know, the main body. So that's awesome. That will be cool to see. And oh, she did take a, she found a spoon and she's going to do a spoon handle. All right. That's awesome. Now, the motion for a mantra swirl is like figure eights, right? That's kind of what you're doing. And I think I remember her sending me a message um, at this point saying she forgot how to do figure eights. So she stopped. And so there's, okay, so now she's going back and she's doing her figure eight swirl. Now it's all the way down at the bottom of the mold, right? So that skewer's all the way down at the base. So you can swirl the whole soap, which is cool. Uh, you don't have to do this if you just want the top to be, you know, swirly. That's fine too, but that's not the mantra swirl. So that's what we're doing. And yeah, there you go. She went back to a skewer and she did nice figure eights throughout the entire thing after realizing that she couldn't remember how to figure eight. And she saved herself. That's that's important. And that's good. And yes. But it looks beautiful and it's totally ready to be put in the oven for gel and sea pop and all of the things. And we will cut it into individual bars tomorrow and, you know, check out the whole pretty thing. Ooh, look at this shiny soap. I love this. Now, ultimately, as you can see with all of it, that is, look at those swirls. They look beautiful. There's awesome depth to all of them. There's like cool color shifts in all of the things. There's not a lot of that yellow 
that came through, right? But yeah, no, they look great. And so I guess that's something to sort of keep in mind for your, you know, making of mantra swirls and all the jazz in the future because it's not... It's not super necessary, ultimately, is where it's what this shows. It's not super necessary where you put your your soap, your color. Because, you know, she started out with the yellows and the greens, and then she started putting whites in and then orange on the sidewalls instead of in the base, like the body, and then more white, like all the things. She just essentially just kept putting soap into the mold until all of the soap was in the mold. And they all look great like those are very lovely swirls and the colors all work really well together for sure um it's interesting that we have these colors so she's doing like this pinky coral with some greens and i did the blues and purples and it's not a it, neither one of these color palettes really suggest this is a plumeria jasmine bar and if one were two, I would say probably this one more than mine, for sure. But I don't, I don't think it much matters. I, I really don't. I think it's a, it's a beautiful bar regardless, and uh, we're probably going to be dealing with that with uh, the scent blends a lot with all of this because again we pick our own colors, but we are using the same scent blend for both attempts at whatever challenge we're doing. Right? That's that. Those were the rules that we have set in place, and uh, so yeah, it's. There's going to be situations wherein a scent blend totally works for the color, for the color story, and others where it just doesn't, or it won't for the other person, or you know, whatever. And I think that's all gonna be fine. But these are, that is a beautiful mantra. There, that's, that's lovely. I like that. I like how there's like some sort of leaf patterns going on at the bottom of those with the thicker and the, the darker green. And that's, it's delightful. I really do love that bar and it has cool colors on the side as well. Yeah, no, they're, those are lovely mantras. She did an excellent job on those and without dividers. So let that be a lesson. Yes, you can do it the, the divider way or you can do it the, the, the easier way, which is not dividers. Not that dividers are really hard, but they're kind of annoying and you know, something else to clean up and so all the things. But those beautiful monstrous swirls, and that is uh, day 275, the Soprentice's turn at the Amy Warden monstrous swirl. And there it is, Georgia May's monstrous swirl. Now, as far as this scent goes, this scent is so beautiful. It has such a nice throw after saponification. It's very strong. And that's saying something because I actually soap my uh, my scent blends pretty low. So it's totally stuck and it totally works. Her color scheme, very beautiful. Love all of the things about it. I was surprised that she did not, you know, do it the way that the soap challenge said to. And I did because usually for everything, I am always telling her when I'm teaching her a new thing, you're supposed to do it this way, but I don't ever do it that way. And so she just kind of learns from me, but I did it the way that you were supposed to, and she did not, and it totally worked out both ways. So if you are interested in the mantra swirl, the frangipani jasmine, either mine or Georgia May's, you can totally find them on the website right now at soapandclay.com. And you know, there'll be a drop down box and you can just select between the two, whichever one you like more is the one that's ultimately the winner for this round for you know us because both of these very beautiful soaps, I can't just make a judgment call on that. Uh, if you're interested in seeing what other Amy Warden soap challenge challenges we tackle, you should subscribe to the channel. That would be cool. We are doing this every day as the name 365 days of soap might suggest. And tomorrow will not be a new challenge video because we have to get the January bath bombs out. But the day after that, new challenge. So yeah, subscribe. For those of you who are subscribed, hey, you get to see the January bath bombs tomorrow. You got to see this cha this challenge today and you'll get to see the new one challenge thing the day after tomorrow. So hey, thanks for subscribing and sticking around. I really appreciate you. Again, thank you so much for joining me for another round of 365 days of soap. I'm out of here for today. I will see you guys all again tomorrow for another round of soapy fun. Bye.